Hello, this is Teresa Kenny from the Hormone Genius Podcast, and I am here with my co-host, Jamie Rachi, and we have a great episode today with someone that I have wanted to interview for a while, a pelvic floor, floor therapist, Kayla Ives. And Kayla is residing in Omaha, and she's been a pelvic floor therapist from the beginning of her career. She resides in Omaha and has started her own business called the Pelvic Physio in Omaha. And she has two boys, William and Benjamin, seven and five. And she moved from Colorado to come back to Omaha and um, decided to stay here, which um, ultimately led to her opening this awesome business. So she's very passionate about women's health and about helping people with pelvic floor related dysfunction. And we are excited to learn from Kayla today this has been a long awaited episode um, mm -hmm. for us and just to learn more really about pelvic floor therapy. So thanks Kayla for being here. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. Oh, before you hopped on or um, before we started recording, I should say, I was just sharing with Kayla how interested I am personally um, just to learn from you. So it's perfect timing. I think even though it was a, a delay, I think it was perfect. So Kayla, can you start off, share us share with us just a little bit about how you became interested in this area. And then I really want to dig in and talk about, you know, what is it exactly um, for people who, who, where this maybe is new information for them? Yeah, I have forever, like my whole life, always loved women's health. And I really thought I wanted to be an OBGYN growing up, shadowed a bunch of them through high school. And it was really what I wanted to do. Um, and then kind of the further I got into college, I was just like, I don't know if this is going to work because I also want to have a family life. And those people work so, so hard. So ultimately, I ended up making physical therapy kind of my my goal. I was an athlete, which leads a lot of us to physical therapy anyway. Um, and then at one of my clinical rotations, there was a women's health physical therapy therapist. And even being in school, I barely knew that that was a specialty because it was so up and coming, it seemed. Um, so I spent some time with her and I truly feel like I watched her change lives all day. Um, she got to be with women in like these intimate moments and, you know, they shared so much with her than they had really shared with anyone before. And I just like, I felt honored to be in that moment where people were able to open up that much. And then, you know, you watched these women get better. And it was just kind of life changing because this, the stuff we see here is heavy. Um, and it changes what women do day to day. And so when I was watching these women get better, it was just like, wow, this is truly how I feel I can make a difference. Um, and so it's what, like I said, it's what I've done my whole career. I was lucky to find a job in it right away. And every patient I have been inspired by, I mean, I say that all the time because, you know, like it's just such an honor to be able to work with these women in this space. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I love that. And I think I, that resonates with me, Kayla, just in my practice, you know, just knowing that we're in such a special place where women can open up. And for you in particular with pelvic floor therapy, I mean, a lot of times people are coming to you because of pain, you know, and that, that is physical, but underneath the physical, and I know you could speak to this, there is so much more deep kind of this holistic part of that mind, body, spirit connection. And so you're, you're not only physically helping them heal the pain, but I mean, and I know this from patients that you're seeing, you are helping them heal through whatever is going on in their life. And again, there's just so much emotional stuff attached to that as well. It is. And it's just, I mean, especially because these sorts of conditions involve all the relationships in their life, you know, it's whether it's them being able to be a mother or a wife, or, I mean, it's just, it's interrupting that so often. And so like there is. I mean, and then we see a ton of trauma too. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that it can't, the, the emotional side can't also manifest physically too. And so, and then, I mean, we get the opportunity to be with these women for an hour, once a week for months sometimes. And, you know, you, we truly get to know them. And I can't tell you the amount of times, you know, we do the evaluation and give them 60 minutes, which is longer than they've had with their OBGYN, of course. But then the next week they'll come in and they'll be like, you know what, what you said last week, made me think of this. And so we get, I feel like we get so many more pieces of the information too, because they're able to make connections, come see it the following week. And then we can kind of follow up with that too, which then completes the whole story. Mm. 
Um, can you share with our listeners, Kayla, like what is pelvic floor therapy? Yeah. So, um, it is, so yeah, big question there. No. So your pelvic floor is a muscle that sits in the bottom of your pelvis, like a bowl. Um, and it actually, it acts like a trampoline. So the muscles go all the way down and then come all the way up to function. Um, so quickly it acts to support your organs to stabilize your pelvis. It has a sphincteric function, meaning it can hold back bowel bladder, and then allow you to release bowel and bladder when that's appropriate. There's a sexual function, and then it acts as a sump pump to kind of help pump lymph and blood back to the heart. Mm. So within all of those functions, there can be dysfunctions too. And so we work with those specific dysfunctions. And now I'm very biased as a pelvic floor therapist, because I think everything is connected to the pelvic floor. Um, but we see a lot of women that have had like chronic pain, whether it's pelvic pain, back pain, hip pain. Um, there's more often than not a bladder component that they're leaking with laugh, cough, sneeze. Um, pain with intimacy, constipation, I mean, abdominal stuff. So those are the types of conditions that we see. So then we treat the muscular dysfunction that corresponds to that. And a lot of times it's pelvic floor tension and then the muscles outside of the pelvis, not doing their job and the pelvic floor doing too much. And so we, that's what we specifically work on is getting all of these muscles to function as they should. So I think what you're saying is like every woman probably could benefit from a pelvic floor therapist. You know, I, I mean, I just think, you know, we oftentimes think, oh, this is just for older ladies who have bladder issues or maybe for a woman who's postpartum and just had a baby, like those two kind of make the most sense, but give us an idea of like what a bunch of other like conditions or just symptoms that women experience that literally like you could help them with. So, I mean, I, in Colorado, I treated children with pelvic floor dysfunction. And so, I mean, we all know kids are constipated a lot of the times because they're too busy. So I, from like three years old, we've done pelvic floor therapy all the way through the whole spectrum of life. Um, So we'll just right now in the clinic, I've got uh, some female athletes. So dancers, gymnasts, um, just you know, girls that have had tailbone injuries, Mm -hmm. those types of women have and girls benefit from pelvic floor therapy. And then, I mean, we have, you know, even like disc injuries. So your pelvic floor is a huge part of your core. It's a fourth of your core. And so anything that affects core function is going to affect the pelvic floor too. And so, I mean, women that have had chronic hip pain or, you know, we have post-op hip pain that, that hasn't gotten better in traditional physical therapy. Um, patients, you know, we have patients that haven't had babies that have endometriosis and we see a whole host of those patients just because that pain creates some muscle dysfunction too. So it really, everyone of every age and every gender can have pelvic floor issues. Uh, and I, I do think it's way more prevalent than we even give it credit for. Uh, how would you describe the difference? Um, like when I think about like tailbone or I think about hip, I always think about chiropractor, mm-hmm. you know? So how do you, how do those two things mesh together? Is it an either or a both and? Yeah. How does that go? Oh, I love chiropractors. I think they do a great job. So the chiropractor kind of comes at things as let's move the joint and the muscles will relax because, you know, we like the, your body likes the alignment and we come at it more like, let's get the muscles relaxed. Body can have the right, you know, alignment or posture. The two kind of mesh together really well because we come at it from other angles. And now is obviously overlap. Um, but I personally think, you know, combination of two is really what gives women or in general, the best outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Teresa, is she kind of breaking up just a little, but it's okay. I think it's okay. It's okay. Okay. I think it's more just like when, um, Colin goes through probably a little bit. Okay. Okay. That's fine. We have somebody to but um to slip slip it out do you feel like she should say that one again um yeah maybe that can you say it again just that was the only time where it felt kind (laughs) of like weird and wrote like frozen ish so all so I just asked the question of um you know the difference between chiropractic and 
pelvic floor and how the two go together. Can you answer it again? I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> so I love chiropractors. They treat the body from let's get the joint mobility there to help the muscle relax and physical therapists look at it as can we help muscle relax to then help the joint and obviously there's a some overlap there but we come at it kind of from opposite directions to meet in the middle for the same you know ultimate goal and so the combination of the two is truly what i believe to be the most beneficial for patients mm, that's great mm-hmm. so walk us through kayla what you know, a lot of people just, I think when I have a patient, I say, Hey, I think you'd really benefit from pelvic floor therapy. And they're kind of like, well, what is, what is the, what are they going to do to me? You know? And I think there's this idea, like, I mean, obviously the pelvic floor is a personal area, right. And coming to an OBGYN can be very personal in terms of kind of the exams that we do. Um, give us an idea of how you approach, um, the exam part and, and just what, what it would feel like, look like to be with a pelvic floor therapist like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the tricky part it is, is really no one expects a pelvic floor there or our physical therapist in general to kind of do what we do. And so we always start off by, I show them the pelvis and where their pelvic floor is at. So they have an, a good idea of why we would need to do the exam we do. Cause it is a vaginal exam. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like an OBGYN exam though, because we don't use stirrups or a speculum and the patient is covered most of the time. But just like if you went to physical therapy for your shoulder, you would expect them to touch and evaluate your shoulder. And so we do that with the pelvic floor because we want to see, is it firing with the muscles that it's supposed to be firing with? Where is the resting tension of that muscle? And so we're evaluating all of that with the vaginal exam. So now it's just, it's, it's supposed to be very, very mild discomfort. Um, the patient's in charge the whole time. And I mean, when people are really nervous about it too, I tell them, you know, a lot of OBGYNs will send knee patients because they can't tolerate what they do. And so we're the, here to give them the best possible experience with this type pelvic exam. Um, We get from there, we get a lot of information from the pelvic floor itself and where the tension is and how it's firing, which then ultimately leads where we else we can look. And then that's going to look a little bit more like her traditional physical therapy evaluation, where we're going to look at how joints move, how your back feels, um, how you're standing, how your balance, all of those sorts of things. But the biggest thing that makes pelvic floor physical therapy different is that internal exam, um, just to evaluate the state of the pelvic floor. What would you say most women struggle with? Like the highest percentage of women, when they come in, this is the thing that they're seeing or that you're noticing in them. So the biggest complaint is always everyone is leaking with laugh, cough, sneeze. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and sometimes they don't even put it as like a symptom because they just are so used to everyone like crossing their legs when they have to sneeze Um, that that it's almost comical, but we, and it's such an easy fix. Mm. I tell women, I'm like, we're going to be able to fix that in one to two visits Mm. for sure. Um, but then the biggest misconception I would say is that everyone thinks they're coming in for Kegels or I've got this like super fancy Kegel that everyone's going to do to make them just strong. But that is just not the case because most of the time, I'm going to say like 98% of the time that pelvic floor is in a state of tension or protect where it's just back to the trampoline. It's not able to go down before it can come up. And so they actually get the opposite. I, we do a lot of strengthening. It's just not necessarily to the pelvic floor. Specifically, we teach the pelvic floor to, you know, work and function like it should in daily life. And there is no super Kegel in the world. No one has that. And there's no machine for that. Um, but yeah, I would say that's the biggest misconception is they feel that well, I'm weak and I, I had a baby and so I'm weak and that's why I'm here. And that's actually not the case at all. It's so interesting because Kayla, so this summer I was trying to be like a good mom, cool mom, go to the park, bring my basketball. And we're like playing basketball. And Justin, and I, my husband and I were doing like a one-on-one thing and the kids had to bet who would win. And he won, unfortunately, but anywho, no, he didn't. I actually, I actually won one of them. He won the other main point is this. I was in the middle of the game. We were, shooting hoops and I leaked I like literally I'm like oh dear I've never done it every time I jumped and I'm like oh my gosh I'm like I just must have a full bladder like in my head I'm thinking oh it's probably fine I just have a full bladder I gotta use it 
a few days later, same thing. I'm like, oh man, shoot. So I probably need to go to a pelvic floor therapist. Yeah. And remember, Jamie, you did have a baby just in case the listener is like, you yeah, know, yeah I did. Them, so it makes sense that, you know, the, and think about it, the pelvic floor goes through so much, right? Kayla, yeah. when you have a baby, I mean, you think about that bowl and like a an eight pound thing coming through the bowl, basically it has to uh, compensate so much. So you can expect that that would really kind of put a toll on the pelvic floor. Am I correct there? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's not even to say like how much stretch there is on the nerves and like where that tailbone position was and how you push and what your hip mobility was, because especially in delivery, your body's going to find it somewhere. And so if your pelvic floor isn't in the best form we'll say, and isn't able to stretch like your body, you, then we see tearing a lot of the time, you know, or if you're, you're, you don't have the mobility in your hips, like then somewhere else compensates. And so that's why there's so many injuries that women feel during labor and delivery. Um, and that's why we do a, a lot with postpartum rehab mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Well, that's such good information. Oh my gosh. What would you say is one of the most surprising, um, you know, things or, or issues that you see women coming in, in with that you just wouldn't think would be managed by, um, pelvic floor therapy. We talked a little bit about them at the beginning. Um, but even like, if there's a story of somebody that you've worked with or a client, um, I'd love to hear about that. So I think the most, the, the area we're not thought of a lot is with GI conditions and with constipation or like, we'll see a lot of women that are like, I have IBS and there's nothing really that helps. And, but here I am sort of thing, kind of last ditch effort. Um, because the pelvic floor has to relax for you to be able to empty your bowel. And so once we get the pelvic floor to do that, like the abdominal bloating, the abdominal pain, the, the, I feel like I have a food allergy that no one can find or whatever. A lot of that will go away too. Um, and it's, yeah, it's the one area, like people are really accepting us for, you know, the bladder and, you know, the pregnancy postpartum, but it's the GI world that we can actually do a lot into. Um, that, like I said, you know, even sometimes I'm like, really, you know, (laughs) I really have that abdominal pain, but I mean, yeah, it's crazy. You know, once you get the, what we say is outlets to function the way they should, I mean, a lot, a lot of different kinds of symptoms Mm. can be improved. So do you have a story? Is there like somebody in your mind that you just think, oh my gosh, this story was amazing. And I want the world to know about this, you know, (sighs) the journey. Yes, it is. I have so many. And like I said, I'm just like blessed to be in these people's lives, I swear. But I, my favorite stories are, and I have a lot of patients, you know, they'll, they'll come in after, you know, I have a few that come in just after they got married and they have a ton of pain with intimacy, you know, and they've, they've been on this journey with endometriosis a lot of times and it's post excision surgery and they're just, they're still in a lot of pain. And then, you know, we work with them not only to get them out of the daily pain, but then also to be able to enjoy intimacy with their mm-hmm. husband. And then they are able to get pregnant. And now I get to work with them in this pregnancy world and then they have a baby. And now I get to work with them in this postpartum world. And it is just so beautiful to be able to see women throughout that in those, all those stages. And because you're, you're truly celebrating with them along the way too. I mean, with, I mean, and you guys with endometriosis, the fertility is kind of in question a lot of the time. And so they, you know, to get to where they're pregnant and then they're able to feel good pregnant and then postpartum and then you bring their babies in. And it's just like, it's so fun to watch women go full circle here, um, and support them along the way. Yeah, that's amazing. And, um, I know, you know, our patients would cross over in that. And then again, I love that there's this like team kind of approach, you know, to care, um, and I learned so much from just talking to my patients that have been to, to you, Kayla. So I just, I love the experience of having this, um, allied health kind of right there mm-hmm. with us. I want to say too, that, and, and, and this is kind of a story, I guess I could share about pelvic floor therapy. Um, I remember working with someone a while ago who was getting married. She hadn't been married yet and she hadn't been sexually active before marriage. So I encouraged her to have her first pelvic exam with me because, and I say this to patients, um, you know, if we do a pelvic exam, sometimes we'll be able to find out how, how it's going to go, you know, 
a little bit and to be able to do that in a safe place with a trusted provider. And this particular patient had a very poor experience with a pelvic mm -hmm. exam in terms of pain. And so I immediately said, Hey, you're getting married in six months. We have time. Let's have you work with a pelvic floor therapist. And I think that could be a game changer. And I actually didn't know, cause I haven't at that point, hadn't used that therapy as much. And it made a world of difference when she got married and on that first night of her honeymoon, you know, and I think, so if you're out there and you know, you're in that experience where, gosh, you're nervous, you don't know how it's going to go because it can be hard the first time having, um, intercourse and it can, you have to work through some things. I think going to a pelvic floor therapist before, mm -hmm. you know, could make a, a world of difference and make everybody so much happier in their early married marriage. Have you had that experience with patients, Kayla? Yes, absolutely. And I talk about too, I mean, especially when it comes to pain, you know, your body is protective and it remembers. And so when you go to be intimate for the first time, you want it to be as positive as possible because you just don't want a negative association with any of that, because that, I mean, then there's another element to work through. And I've seen women that have worked through it beautifully and come out wonderful on the other side, but it's just like anything, if you can avoid it, like, let's do that. Let's be as preventative as possible. And so again, fun to follow women through that journey too, especially, you know, when they come in and they, we work with them for a few months and then they get married and they go on their honeymoon and they'll text me like success with a thumbs up or something. And it's just, you know, it's so fun to be a part of that. You know what listeners, um, as we're talking, so we use zoom when we do our podcasting and both Teresa and I are like a bobblehead. We're like <laughs> <laughs> nodding our heads up and down with a big smile on our face because it's such important information, especially for yes, the women who have waited and you know, sex is new and oh, that's so hard. Um, Okay. So just kind of connecting all the dots. So uh, a woman experiencing infertility. Okay. She goes to you. Maybe she it's unexplained infertility. She doesn't know what's going on. Um, uh, maybe she's been pregnant in the past. Maybe there's been a miscarriage, whatever the case is. So she's recommended to go to the pelvic floor therapist. What would be things that you would assess that would give you information about the possible cause of her subfertility? So, I mean, that's really, it's going to be different for, for different women, for sure. Um, I, and different providers, cause I have been in this field a long time and I have worked with a lot of other providers, which who have, I have learned for. So I really make sure that these women, one have had the proper hormone panels and all of that stuff. And so I basically get them to Teresa <laughs> is what I do, but then we, <laughs> but then too, I mean, especially after a miscarriage, your body is a lot of times holding on to some of that emotional stress and emotion that you went through too. So there is a physical side. I, we, I see a lot of women that had a miscarriage that now have noticed, you know, two cycles later that tampons really hurt. And so it's also working through some of the way their body is holding on to that emotional trauma that in helping them release some of that and recognize that, and maybe adding another person to their team for, for the emotional support side too. Um, we, we work a lot on that. And then, I mean, depending on the reason for the infertility, the unexplained piece is, is a little difficult, but you know, if there is, you know, endometriosis, we, I mean, we can work a lot on scar tissue, like PTs are treating organs and just making sure that your organs are able, you know, to move within your body, like they should. I mean, there is just, it's always really complicated. And so we're definitely not just the one place you need to go, but having us be a piece of, you know, what you're working on and just a piece of that puzzle to get you to where you want to be is super beneficial. I really like the idea of thinking it as inflammation that we're kind of looking for in the body. You know, I can you know, talk about this with my patients, like your body is a bucket, you know, and we throw things in the bucket in life, a miscarriage. I was sick a bunch as a kid. I've got a bunch of gut issues. I had surgery and my gallbladder came out. All of these things go in there and we're trying to find where the body still holds inflammation. And this is the same with pelvic floor therapy. It's like, you're, you're looking maybe at a little bit more focused part, but it's still part of the whole, but you're looking for that area that is expressing inflammation mm -hmm. and you're targeting that. 
And so, you know, and I always say this to my patients with infertility, if we can get your body to be as optimal as possible, reduce the areas of inflammation, get your hormones working, right. You know, we're just trying to let the body do what it was meant to do naturally. Right. But if there's barriers to that physically and emotionally, you know, it's, it's sometimes holding the body up from completing a process that it should normally do. And again, this is, it's such a great kind of partnership that we can have to really make these areas all work together for the benefit of the patient. Have you, have you guys ever read the book, the body keeps the score? Yes, it is an amazing book. It, it It is amazing. And, you know, I recommend it to patients lightly sometimes because it can be a lot. But I also encourage women to read it that have been through trauma and just have it be extremely validating yeah. for what they're experiencing. Right. That just in that there's like, as you were talking, I'm like, there's an intelligence uh, in our body that it can you know, there is a memory, you know, in our muscles that sometimes we don't even cognitively think through there's memory there. And so, um, I just think that's very interesting, um, to, to kind of start digging in and asking those questions that often can't be asked or are not asked at the regular, you know, ob you know, appointments. It's so important. And even just processing and releasing that, is so important to verbally process it to self, you know, self-awareness, verbally process and how that might make a difference. I I have a friend, um, she's a functional medicine doctor and she was just talking about how sometimes, you know, when her clients or her patients come in, they're all kind of imbalanced and wonky. And then literally she just lets them talk to her. And like 20 minutes later, they leave and they're like aligned, (laughs) you know, they just needed to process through. So part of me wonders too, like, you know, there, you're doing that physical component, Kayla, you know, you're working through the physicality of the imbalance or whatever the case is, but just that the, the balance that's being produced by you simply being there, asking, supporting, being a safe person. Like I can imagine that being so extremely healing for women. Yeah. And I mean, I try and encourage women to just to, you know, step back and notice when you're having symptoms and what is also going on in your life too, because you see, if there is a lot of stress, we see women have symptoms. And I mean, to your point, Teresa, about the inflammation and and you, there's just that bucket, we can only hold so much. And even when it comes to, um, like hormones and the amount of exercise you can tolerate and where that you are in your life. And I I'll tell women, like, you just might not be able to do orange theory right now because you've got so much else on your plate. And especially, you know, with the infertility side, it's just, you need to be, we need to be kind to your hormones. And, and I do use that bucket example of you can only take on so much right now and your bucket is already full. And that marathon training is probably not a part of your bucket right now. And, And that can be, I mean, I, I don't know why people would want to run a marathon, but it can also be, it, it can, it can be extremely like relieving for them too. just like, okay, I'll let it go. The other day I had a, a, a female and she, she is struggling still with, with the endometriosis and the pain. And I'm just like, you know what, we can let go of CrossFit for a minute and it's going to be okay. Let's get you feeling better and then decide what to act mm-hmm. back in, in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that you say that because I feel like that's a conversation I have all the time with women. I think there's just so much pressure to like exercise and be fit and, you know, have a particular body or, you know, that you've got to do all this stuff. And so many times I'm like, no, you don't, you know, you you really don't. You can say, let's let the body rest. So many times we, we exercise it, we're active, we're stressful, but we don't give that time for rest. And so I think that's, that's very good and intuitive for women. Um, Jamie. Yeah. I mean, I think we're closing up here. I know you have your special last question for Kayla to round this up. Yes. Yes. Um, What do you wish? Well, actually, you know what, before I ask that, this is one last thing I want to ask, and then you can actually tie it in. I'll combine the questions. Okay. I was going to ask you, what are like the three main takeaways like that you would want our listeners to take home with them today. And we can tie that into the last question of what do you wish every young woman or every woman knew about her hormone genius? So what are those three like take home points? So your pelvic floor has the five main, five main functions, the support, stability, sphincter, sexual, and sump pump. Okay. Your hormones 
100% affect your pelvic floor and your pelvic floor function, and that weakness is not normally the issue. So never let that be your full answer for anything. Mm -hmm. And now I want everyone to know that our hormones are designed to work for us, not against us. So even if you're having symptoms, just use it as uh, just a window into what your body needs in this moment for it to perform at its best in all of your roles in life. Mm, so good. I learned so much from you, Kayla. Oh my gosh. Um, how can people get connected with you? Do you have a social media handle, a website? Yep, we are at um, the pelvic physio omaha.com and then on Instagram and Facebook at the pelvic physio omaha. Awesome. Oh my goodness, Kayla. Thank you so much um, for gracing us with your presence today. And again, I'm sure our listeners um, who have not heard of pelvic floor therapy and who are really struggling with getting to the root, um, hopefully this will give them another tool in their toolbox to explore because I know it can be very frustrating, you know, when we deal with hormone issues. So we just so appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you so much. I love what you ladies are doing. And so it's just amazing to be able to have been a part of it today. Thanks Thanks so much, Kayla. Thank you.